Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Samanta uh, Prabhu, Chandan here. Chandan Prabhu. Then what my name is Hare Krishna. How far are you from temple in Chicago? Prabhuji, from temple it is thirty-seven uh, miles. Uh, it takes some forty-five minutes. Which area you are in? In Palatine, Palatine Northern uh, Suburban, near I to Bhopal Group. Yeah. I think there is a Bhakti Diksha there, Prabhu. Can you please provide me the number, Prabhuji? I tried to reach out to one of the number. I got it from temple. I went to temple and got a number for the uh, for the Bhakti Diksha, but uh, that number doesn't work. Uh, actually, one or two two times I went to the temple. But I could not able to reach. I am trying. I I Google here uh, to find out some Bhakti Vishesh near our area. I didn't get it. If you can provide me, or you can. Continue. I will text you one number. Uh, he is Ropan Mara disciple. Oh, um, I think he lives in Palatine, something like that, right? Oh, is it? <laughs> it's really good. Please, uh, when you get time. I am not you sure. You call him, reach out to him, Definitely. and then ask him. Maybe he is the one. If he is not, he will point out to the right person. Understand? Yeah. At least he will tell me. I am in this place. I don't know anyone here, except my colleagues. I don't know anyone here. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Dandavat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dandavat Pranam. ओम अज्ञान तिमिरन दस ज्ञानन जना शलाकय चक्षुर मलितम येना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यं ददाति स्वपदांतिक वन्दे हम श्री गुरु श्री उतापद कमलम श्री गुरु वैष्णवम च श्री रूपम सागर जातम सहागणा रघुनाथ अमृतम तम सजीव साधुवैतम सावधूतम परिजन सहितम कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहागण ललिता श्री विशाखा विध्वंस हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृष भानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंश कल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य <clears throat> पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखुम करोति वाचालम अंगुम लंगायते गिरे यत कृपा तमाहम बंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर ओके Did we discuss this? I think we discussed these. Uh, did we discuss the cause of ignorance? The our desires is because of ignorance. Ignorance can be removed by uh, knowledge, and knowledge comes by surrendering onto the supreme. 
by putting faith and worship in the Supreme. Did we cover that? Prabhuji, we covered this. Yeah, we covered this one. Okay. Did we saw this video on Bhagavad Gita by Gopal Krishna Maharaj? No, Prabhuji, I think not. This we covered. When one's intelligence, mind, faith and refuge are all fixed in Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgiving to complete knowledge. Not sure, huh? No, not this one, Prabhuji. Previous slide was... Uh, yeah, Prabhuji. we covered till that... Um, yeah, Prabhuji, we covered till the picture. Uh, yeah, till yeah, this. Yeah. Why will I leave one verse? Uh, okay. No, Prabhuji, we, we covered till slide 29. Really? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. <coughs> this diagram we covered and this video we saw, correct? Yes, Prabhuji. And this I read and we discussed. Yes, and we covered yes. that next diagram also. And we stopped here. Kind yes, of. 515. Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> okay. So, we begin our discussion now. Uh, is Lord responsible? So we saw the acronym for this chapter is STEP. Um, S stood for uh, stay in this word. T stood for mm. three doers. And we are discussing the three doers. Um, one of the doer is the living entity. And the only thing which is in the hand of living entity is desire. Nothing else is in our hand. Like uh, yesterday, um, I was discussing with a group of devotees and when one Mataji asked this question um, if we want to do some kind of devotional service and we are unable to do um, what can we do to do what we are unable to do how to develop determination to do and take next step in the path of bhakti and my answer was desire that's the only thing that is in the hand of living entity. But that desire should be sincere. It can be, for example, I want to get up early morning. Uh, there may be a desire, but then there may be some inhibitions in our desire. What will I do? What if I get tired? How will I uh, survive in a daytime? Um, if I finish my rounds in the morning, then what will I do in the evening when I'm doing my rounds? And so many thoughts may be there, which kind of uh, subsides our desire. At the same time, we have this feeling that uh, getting up early and finishing my rounds in the morning is the best. So there is this mixed desire and that's where the results are also mixed. But if our desire is sincere, that this is what I want, my Lord, please help me this is what I really want and if we are clear that this is what I want the Lord will immediately grant you if not immediately if we do not have adhikar for that very soon he will grant you but sincere desire our progress in our spiritual life um, starting from day one till we realize ourselves uh, there are many many stages that we have to go through Bhagavad Gita is like the most basic book, the most basic book. And then if devotees remain sincere and they want to make progress, then I want to go deep in the science of bhakti, um, which includes uh, um, first canto, first parshimad bhagavatam, nectar of instruction, nectar of devotion, Ishopanishad. So <clears throat> desire, if we are really desiring, sincerely desiring, uh, we will be able to attain perfection in this life. Okay. Um, and what, what impels us to do sinful activities? Again, that desire. Because we desire to engage in sinful activities. What impels us to desire sinful activities? 
ignorance what is that ignorance our identification with matter our identification with the body and when we identify with the body we try to gain happiness that are connected with the body so that is the ignorance and nor does the supreme lord this we covered and then we'll start from next i'm just summarizing nor does the supreme lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activities krishna is not responsible if something wrong is happening in our life it's because something wrong we have done in the past and the reason we have done something wrong in the past is because we desire to do wrong thing in the past human life is responsible life we are responsible for everything we do at the same time if we desire good things and good things are happening still it is our desire so the lord is not he does he is not responsible for sinful or pious activities Em embodied being embodied means who have a body embodied beings means soul in a body like we however are bewildered because of the ignorance which covers the real knowledge and because we are because um we misuse our free will towards material desire because we are bewildered in our desires and that starts the whole cycle of sinful action uh sinful reaction will come um and it further increases our inclination to perform that sinful act again and that karma bandhan completely binds us so the best thing to do is um uh, strictly follow four regulatory principles no meat eating no gambling no intoxication no illicit sex which is outside marriage strictly follow four regulatory principles that will not incriminate us otherwise if we break these regulatory principles then it's like you know <laughs> like recently i had some cough i get it every year and uh, i would take whatever is made in the temple we don't have any separate diet for us so um if i take some medicine at the same time if i eat food which is oily it will continue so i have to take medicine at the same time i have to follow diet restrictions likewise in order to grow in bhakti uh, we have to take medicine which is elixir which is the holy name uh, uh naam sankirtan yagya so we chant that is like a medicine um, that will remove our ignorance and very quickly we establish us uh, in our original spiritual nature mm, will result in self realization just this holy name alone will give you everything one time one devotee was giving class he is very very advanced devotee practicing for 40 years and every time he speaks he sings kirtan the whole environment is surcharged with spiritual energy very advanced soul <coughs> and he was giving uh, the sunday feast class in detroit temple and then he led kirtan and that kirtan was mesmerizing um uh, and then he said do you all want to experience what i am experiencing everybody said yes <laughs> then he said uh, holy name he said just keep chanting it will give you all perfection so that is medicine that we have to take and then at the same time i follow four regular principles very strictly otherwise we are taking medicine and then we are eating oily food and i mean this regulated principles that will continue our disease uh, so please do that now uh, how can we remove our ignorance uh, okay one by one maybe yugendra prabhu you want to start i'm sorry okay you can drop prabhu are krishna prabhu ji yes when when however one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nascence is destroyed then his knowledge reveals everything as the sunlight 
as the sun lights up everything in the daytime mm. so just like uh, when the sun comes all darkness is removed likewise when knowledge comes uh, all the ignorance is destroyed now the question will be uh, all our sinful desire is because of ignorance ignorance can be removed by knowledge now how do i get that knowledge that krishna is describing here uh pravina mata ji yes prabhu ji when once intelligence mind faith and refuge are fixed in supreme then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of revelation mm. so the the way to gain knowledge is when one's intelligence mind faith and refuge are all fixed in supreme uh when we chant the holy names when we offer prayers to the lord when we associate with devotees serve the devotees discuss uh, hari katha in association of devotees when we perform these things uh, faith shelter mind intelligence fix in supreme then one becomes fully cleansed of all misgivings through complete knowledge <coughs> and one walks straight on the path of liberation so how to gain knowledge how to gain knowledge reading books prabhu ji ha reading books reading books is one way uh oh, okay what else being in association being in association what else following uh, uh, preachings of guru ji following teachings of bhagavad gita okay what else prabhu <laughs> ji uh, approach approach a guru approaching a spiritual master okay what else okay. faithfully rendering their devotional service faithfully rendering devotional service so these are the ways to gain knowledge whatever you have mentioned um just by reading books alone we will not be able to gain knowledge uh, it seems like we can gain knowledge but real knowledge is something that resonates in our heart um um associating with devotees and discussing bhagavad gita <clears throat> and reading shri prabhupad purports is also a way to associate with shri prabhupad and devotees so by performing devotional service and reading is one aspect of devotional service do we gain knowledge okay now small video उन्होंने कहा था कि हम सबको गीता और भागवत दोनों का ही अध्ययन करना चाहिए सुबह के समय इसलिए इसकान के केंद्रों में भागवत का अध्ययन किया जाता है और शाम के समय गीता का अध्ययन किया जाता है इन दोनों का पढ़ना बहुत ही आवश्यक है आप श्रीमद भागवत में देखते हो जब परम भगवान श्री कृष्ण प्रकट हो गए थे तो सनातन साथी अर्जुन जो थे शोक में थे और अर्जुन ने उन घटनाओं का स्मरण आरंभ किया क्योंकि बहुत एक दृष्टि से असंभव थी और उनके मित्र सहयोग से वो सफलता प्राप्त कर सके इसके पश्चात अर्जुन ने भगवान के भगवत गीता के श्लोकों का वर्णन आरंभ किया और जब अर्जुन ने भगवान के भगवत गीता के श्लोकों का स्मरण आरंभ किया तो उन्हें ऐसे लगा परम भगवान श्री कृष्ण 
Okay. Now, did we watch this video? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, we watched it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think also watch because login through a phone. I the Zoom is not working for me. I tried logging through Zoom, but I directly connected uh, through phone, so I could not see that video. And then here, Prabhuji. Okay. Okay. You said you tried to log in through Zoom and didn't work. Yeah, the Zoom link which I is there in the picture format. So I try to click it. It. it uh, I mean, I need to type it. So I did not uh, get a chance to do that. So maybe someone it. can send the link to in the group. Yes, Prabhuji. I, uh, today morning, Himanshu Prabhu, I think sent a new link. Uh, the uh, old I, link is not working. Yes, uh, or oh, Navya Mataji had sent or something. I don't remember, but there was a new link. I, I'll send it to Chandan Prabhu. Okay, perfect. Okay. Chandan Prabhu, join through Zoom then. That will be easier for you. To I will. I will. I'm going to join that. Okay. Okay. So we discussed some teachings again of Bhagavad Gita, which is good. Bhagavad Gita is like that. We should discuss as many times. So I'm quite positive we have to start from here. Correct? Yes, Prabhuji. I yes, Prabhuji. Can I ask? Yes, sure, Prabhu. See, now, um, this is good. Um, actually, my original desire is also to have um, five, six families. Keep it close group and then make it very interactive and go deep. That way, we know uh, everyone is very sincere, everyone is chanting, um, following for the great principles and then Dive in deeper. That's my purpose also. Devashish Prabhu, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji, I wa wanted to ask uh, um, from the video, uh, what was that circumstance in which uh, Arjuna was trying to remember Lord and he also remembered the Bhagavad Gita Shloka? Yeah, this happened uh, when uh, Arjuna was coming back when Krishna disappeared. And uh, uh, Narad Muni told uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj, now Krishna went to Dwarka after Mahabharat war is over. And uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj was the king now. And Yudhishthira Maharaj was seeing that people are lying. Uh, people are becoming angry. Uh, people are cheating each other. Um, and uh, some wrong things are happening. So Maharaj Yudhishthira got a doubt that probably... Krishna has disappeared from the planet and Kaliva has begun. Otherwise, how could people behave in such a way? It must be influence of Kaliva. And uh, while Maharaj Vishwa was thinking, Narad Muni came and Narad Muni said, uh, the Supreme Lord will soon disappear. And at that point of time, uh, um, as Yudhishthira Maharaj was watching over days, Yudhishthira Maharaj got a feeling that maybe Krishna has disappeared. And Arjuna already went to Dwarka to meet Krishna because he was feeling separation and also to get the news of how Krishna is. And it's been two months, Arjuna has not returned. And Yudhishthira Maharaj anxiety is increasing. Has Krishna disappeared? Um, why is Arjuna not coming back? And then when Arjuna, after two months, he came back and Arjuna was depressed. <laughs> and Yudhishthira Maharaj got a feeling. But Yudhishthira Maharaj has no guts to ask Arjuna, has Krishna disappeared? So he is asking, uh, uh, how is Krishna's sons? How is the queens of Dwarka? Uh, how are the Yadavas? How are they doing? How is Samba? How is... Uh, and uh, he is taking all these names. And uh, Arjuna was completely depressed. That time, Arjuna remembered the instruction of Bhagavad Gita and he could come out of his limitation. Is that all right? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Yeah, you are welcome, Prabhu. Okay, so we will finish this chapter. Only very few verses are remaining. It's a short chapter. Okay, now... Uh, Maybe Devashish Prabhu. <coughs> you are mute. Uh, 
Devashish Prabhu? Yeah. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Um, the humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentleman Brahmana, a cow, an, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. Now, this cow. is, yeah. So, this is now, this, there are four or five verses mentioned here that describe the effects of a person who has received knowledge who has received knowledge now the knowledge is gained by surrendering onto the supreme and once we gain knowledge then we develop equal vision and what is equal vision like as you see here um, this sannyasi he is seeing a cow he is seeing a dog he's seeing elephant he's seeing a brahmana and he's seeing a dog eater and he's seeing they're all part and parcel of supreme this is equal vision um like one time um i was just recently day for yesterday i was hearing a lecture uh, by one of shila Prabhupada disciple and he was mentioning that uh, one time shila Prabhupada um saw an ant in his room and uh, proper heart became compassionate and Prabhupada called his disciple and he said take this ant out and very carefully and drop the ant on the leaf so it can find some food um, this ant is looking for food in the room so Prabhupada was so so um, so concerned and so careful even to the minutest details so that is equal vision um, Another time I was hearing a lecture by my spiritual master and he was mentioning that uh, he went to this a big party where uh, President Modi invited him and uh, there were many big politicians and stars. And my spiritual master said, I was thinking, what what am I going to do here? Why Krishna, why have you brought me here? <laughs> what is my service here? But he wanted to develop relationships so that he can bring them and make them favorable to his Khan and Krishna consciousness. So then uh, my spiritual master was looking up and on the tree an owl came and the owl and my spiritual master looked into the eyes of the owl and he was thinking this owl is uh, a spirit so like me um, because of whatever reasons um, this spirit soul uh, is encaged in this body of an owl and uh, he was giving that how there is and um, Maharaj saw that there is not much difference between me and him uh, everyone is whether it's an ant whether it's a dog whether it's a cow um, they are all same spirit souls they are engaged in different different bodies and uh, when one who can see that that is equal vision and Srila Prabhupada often used to say we are not Hindus Muslims Americans etc we are spirit soul when we identify ourselves according to the um, body caste creed sex and different parts of India etc it's all bodily conception of life. Okay. Uh, now, who will read? Uh, maybe Srinivas Prabhu and Padma Mataji one by one? Yeah, Prabhuji. A person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self-intelligent, who is unbewildered, and who knows the science of God is already situated in transcendence. Mm. So he neither becomes happy when he gains something material and he or neither he laments when he loses something or gains something which is unpleasant. This is one of the signs of person situated in transcendence. <coughs> Chetan <coughs> Lord Chaitanya <coughs> mentions uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, manda ei bhala sabha mana dharma. This is good and this is bad. This is all mental, mental 
uh, mental. We see the same thing in Bhagavad Gita, where uh, um, Krishna says in second chapter, fourteenth verse, Matra sparshas tu kontaya sitoshna shukha dukhada agama pai no nityas tamsta tikshava bharata. Happiness and distress will come just like winter and summer seasons. They will come. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. He tolerates. Tam Sitikshwa Bharata. Therefore, tolerate Arjuna. The reference given is Krishna says you cannot kill your family members because they are spirit souls. Agreed. Even though if I see a family member as a spirit soul when the family member departs there will be pain like i remember i know my family member they're all spirit souls but when my father passed away there was lot of pain in the heart so when a loved one or when something anything happens the nature of this material world there will be unfortunate circumstances and that's the nature of this word. It's unavoidable. So although we may have a spiritual vision, still we will go through happiness and distress. And Krishna told in that respect, happiness and distress will come um, just like winter and summer season. And one must learn to tolerate, to tolerate. On another sense, when we do not have a spiritual vision, then when we do not see things as Krishna's mercy, then uh, happiness and distress becomes a mental mental platform like many many stories some are coming to my mind some of you may have heard it but nothing wrong in listing it again one time one family had a huge desire to come to America and uh, they came to America and they became really happy and they were like uh, um, Krishna fulfilled our desires and we are so happy and then this is 9-11 uh, case happened uh, in 2002 I think where uh, the World Trade Center was brought down and the husband left the body in that incident unfortunately and then later on the wife was telling that um, we made a our biggest mistake we made is uh, um, we came to America. If we would not have come to America, this would not have happened. So initially this was very good for them. Eventually it was very bad for them. So what is good and what is bad uh, is perceived only based on how we perceive the situation. But what, but the way we perceive the situation may not be the ideal way. That's why Krishna says, Sab mano dharma. everything is mental concoction. Um, Another um, um, another example is, you may have heard the story also. There was uh, uh, a king who went for hunting and, and who lost his thumb. And he came back and minister said, uh, uh, very good, everything is Krishna's mercy. And the king said, it is Krishna's mercy. And the king threw that minister in the jail. And later on, when king was going again with the, another minister, the new appointed minister who was actually very envious man and who only uh, inspired the king to put the old minister in the jail because he wanted to become the minister. So when the king was going with the new minister, um, they were caught by these uh, Aghoras, aboriginals, and they decided to take the king and uh, offer him as Bali to Mother Kali, Goddess Kali. But then they notice that uh, the king thumb is cut. So it's not a complete offering. So they let the king go and instead they offered the new minister to Goddess Kali. And the king realized that actually it was Krishna's mercy um, that I lost my thumb. Because if I wouldn't have lose, lost my thumb, I would have lost my life. So <clears throat> what is good, what is bad is based on and also in this material world, uh, somebody suffering is another man's happiness. 
and another man's happiness is somebody else's suffering uh, all the happiness and distress in this world is relative like i was thinking uh, zoom we use we are using so much they are greatly benefited by coronavirus greatly benefited at the same time it's a virus which is given suffering to millions of people so millions of people are suffering at the same time some people are getting benefited material using this and they are considering themselves very fortunate so it's all manodharma okay and a, and a transcendental person who gains real knowledge understands the nature of this material world is sometimes people will glorify sometimes people will criticize sometimes when we want something we'll get it sometimes when we don't want will be taken away etc 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 i don't care i am concerned about reawakening my relationship with the supreme lord let me work toward that a person who is still running after material happiness he is said to be in ignorance because uh, he is taking material world so seriously not realizing at the time of that he will lose everything and that's like he is blinded by the maya shakti of the material world so one should not be blinded one should have a vision of what's the purpose of human life it is not meant anything we gain in this material world uh <laughs> it's actually useless <laughs> because <laughs> you cannot take anything with you in the time of death and everything will be taken away but to speak about material things all the people we are connected will be taken away the true nature of this material world is uh brahma ji says in shrimad bhagavatam pralad maharaj also says don't take this material world seriously material world is a place of rectification um the per material world is compared to actually prison house and the purpose of prison house is rectification to so the reason there is suffering it's an indication that this is not where we belong to and the reason we are looking for happiness is because we are originally eternally happy but because we are identifying with this world and trying to become happy in this world there is suffering because krishna is trying to indicate us through these symbols of suffering that uh, uh don't try to don't try to stay here but go out okay so that's one aspect of a liberated person he is not unaffected by happiness and distress in this world um now um uh, padma mata ji Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness, for he concentrates on the supreme. So, what are the activities of a liberated person in this material world? He is not attracted to sense pleasure, uh, because it is very, very temporary. um one time one devotee said um, if you want to enjoy in this world uh, think about it uh, how much can you enjoy how long can you enjoy <laughs> how much can you enjoy every material happiness in this world is very short lived how much can you enjoy and it becomes quickly boring it just begins with some excitement and how long can you enjoy <laughs> uh, usually out of 60 70 years usually people enjoy only between probably 25 to 35 years or 25 to 40 years once old age comes again only suffering mostly suffering um <clears throat> how much can you enjoy how long can you enjoy a liberated person is not attracted why because he has a much higher goal he is attracted to uh Uh, the divine pastimes of the lord he is attracted to realize himself and he knows that that's actually where i am i can truly be happy and uh, the more we in the beginning uh, process of self realization or krishna consciousness is more like we are theoretically and intellectually trying to understand the nature of this material world and uh, spiritual world is more like a blank for us more like pata nahi upar kya hai 
we don't know what is there we don't know okay bhagavad gita krishna is telling let me do this so half half heartedly without any realization or much understanding people try to follow spiritual life and that's great in itself that's great because somewhere we have to begin and uh, when consciousness very materially absorbed it's okay to begin by putting faith in bhagavad gita but then once when, but we are talking about the liberated persons who have knowledge the liberated persons have a divine vision and uh, they are completely attracted to transcendence to spiritual life and uh, no material desire remains otherwise how can they be liberated person so they don't identify themselves with the matter and they lose all desire to enjoy the matter and uh, they know this enjoyment with matter will bring lot of suffering and uh, it will further incriminate me to this material world and by trying to enjoy matter i am going to reduce i am going to <coughs> i i am going to lose my spiritual happiness and he doesn't want to do that because he knows that the spiritual happiness i am experiencing way way higher i have tried all different kinds of happiness in the past a um, lot of misery came but this happiness is something way way beyond it's like a fresh fresh breath fresh air uh everything looks fresh in spiritual life then he starts running for it and this is one example of sukadev goswami liberated soul he came out many ladies were taking shower even without clothes sukadev goswami was completely disinterested he didn't even care and he himself was not wearing any clothes that is a qualification of uh, like today we were discussing bhagavatam class mother malti ke bhagavatam class and uh in the purport um the first line propad mentions it was striking propa says <coughs> a krishna conscious person uh the qualification of a krishna conscious person or the qualification of a representative of krishna is that he is completely free from the three modes of material nature or he is completely free from the maya's illusion and this here we see an example of sukadev goswami completely free and that's how he is the perfect representative of krishna that's why he spoke shrimad bhagavata so he is free from desire to enjoy in this material world in this uh, but he enjoys within um, in this with a self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme this is another very very important point is our happiness comes by concentrating on the supreme when you chant the names of the lord try to hear the mantra try to hear the mantra the name of the lord is non different from the lord just like we saw the example of ajamil he called out the name of narayan although he called out to his son he didn't really refer to narayan but still but but the name of the lord is not different from the lord but that is not the situation in this material world um um like the other day i was giving an example if you are thirsty if you say water water will not quench your thirst so water does not the word water and the actual water are different what the word water can do the what the what actual water can do the name water cannot do but on the contrary uh, in transcendence um they are the same in other words what krishna can do the name of krishna can do so we don't need to meditate on the form of krishna specifically uh because uh, it is mentioned by bhakti vinod thakur that meditating on the form of the lord is very difficult um in a conditioned state it is very difficult it requires lot of mental stress and the mind will have a tendency to go here and here and here and there and here and there but to say hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari even though we are not focusing on the form of the lord while chanting if we are just hearing the mantra 
that is same as concentrating on the supreme that is same as concentrating on the supreme and that is much easier because just by moving your mouth and pushing some air you can chant the names of the lord uh, much more difficult to to have the image in the mind even our scriptures mention that one should not try to meditate on the form of the lord um, while chanting artificially but the first stage of progression in chanting is hear the names hear the word recently i was hearing a class by dhamapad maharaj deepika mataji was also there and i asked this question um um how to increase our concentration on chanting and mara said ear has the power to focus the mind ear has the power to focus the mind uh, so if you simply hear the mantra uh, that mantra once you start actually hearing the mantra the mantra will focus the mind and uh, the first realization is <clears throat> the mantra sounds very transcendental and sweet that's the beginning of spiritual realization <clears throat> by the mercy of the lord slowly over period of time it may begin immediately it may begin begin after some time slowly over period of time the remembrance of the form of the lord will come automatically through the mantra the moment you start chanting the mantra the form of the lord will come to will appear to you whatever it is the picture you are worshiping a deity you are attracted to in any form it can be bal krishna it can be jagannath it can be radha rani any form will appear to you and it will stay with you and you will easily be able to absorb yourself in the lord uh, that is next stage of chanting after after you hear 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 um in short period of time if you very sincerely try to hear you will realize the rupa of the lord you will realize the form of the lord and that will become a part of your meditation but whether you are hearing the names or the form comes or in whichever way just by concentrating on the supreme you will derive great happiness so a transcendentally liberated soul is attracted to that happiness and because it is so high he is able to he is not really attracted to the things of this material world it may happen that if you are chanting for a long period of time we sometimes may not even realize uh, how much nectar i am receiving the holy name we may not even realize because it has become normal and natural for us to derive the nectar then what krishna does is once in a while krishna will take away the nectar from the holy name and we will have a difficult time in chanting the names of the lord that's when we deeply realize are yaar <laughs> and now one day if krishna name does not dance on our tongue dance means by his own free will uh, not like a mechanical mo movement of the lips but lord gives absorption one day lord does not give absorption uh the whole day becomes miserable so then we realize how valuable is the lord name and uh, how lightly i am taking lord's name how lightly i am i should be so grateful to what i am receiving rather i am thinking uh, it's okay so what <laughs> so a liberated person concentrates on the supreme through the medium of holy names okay uh Prabhu ji, uh, is that the saturation point? No. Can, we can tell. No, like uh, you know, suppose like <laughs> we chant for, uh, like we chant sixteen rounds every day. Okay. That becomes a habit. Yes. So, uh, so uh, as we know, like human tendency is, if we get something easily and we go on, we don't have the value for that. so yeah we can tell that like yeah we... it's it's true uh sometime when krishna does not reciprocate in the names uh then we realize 
what I was receiving for so long. <laughs> uh, does that make sense? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Usually, when we began chanting, like my own experience, uh, the chanting was a difficult task for me. Um, for almost a year, there was a, um, a great amount of struggle, maybe one and a half years, maybe two years, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I had a great struggle in chanting and uh, uh, then somehow things changed somehow and I still don't know how things change but I heard from a devotee when Krishna mercy comes things becomes much more easier and after initiation once you accept a spiritual master things become way way more easier like one of the devotee in um, in Grand Rapids uh, he got initiated last week and uh, I called him after three days uh, and I asked him Prabhu so what's your experience <laughs> you are initiated he said Prabhu chanting is just flowing <laughs> I said good good very nice he said following regulatory principles is so easy and uh, I am able to have so, such a good control over myself and chanting is so so nice i'm so happy and uh, he was very grateful that he got initiated so again you have to experience it go through you have to go through it to experience it but if we don't have experience like i remember um, when i used to chant i would mm -hmm. i would tell one devotee um, i told one devotee that uh, uh, um, Prabhuji, I'm having a lot of struggle in chanting. And uh, he said, that's because you're not initiated. <laughs> so our, uh, whatever we are doing right now is actually a practice. We are taking a step. Um, we are trying to become sincere. We are trying to get realizations. Uh, we are trying to go deep in bhakti. When we are ready, Krishna will send us Guru. We have to go long way long way but right now we are practically not even scratching a surface and we are not able to have a vision of what's out there not even a vision of what's out there uh, but all good fortune will come upon all of us if we just continue and uh, uh, our acharya vishnu chakravarti thakur explains systematically go deep into deeper literatures systematically bhagavad gita Srimad bhagavatam Nectar of Devotion, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Charitamrita is very high. It's like PhD course. And then there are there are deeper books. So systematically grow. Uh, um, and there is long way to go. But every stage becomes more and more pleasing to the heart. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Padma Mataji read. Okay. Uh, Sridhar Prabhu. Who is and then, question? This is my path. My path, yes. So you mentioned like uh, name leads to farm, it's an advanced stage. So advanced in the sense, is it at the pure level? No, no. Uh, pure level is prema. Like uh, in the beginning, we tried to focus on the like um, this is mentioned by Rupa Goswami that as chant chanting advances, then we go from the stage of Nam, Rup, Guna and Lila. That's how chanting advances. In the beginning, the name is revealed. The name is revealed means when we chant, our whole body vibrates by the name. And uh, um, we derive a lot of pleasure just through the name medium. And uh, when the Rupa is revealed, then the form of the Lord remains fixed in our mind while we chant. And that form stays with us throughout the two hours. At the same time, when the form is fixed in our heart, um, the focus is still on hearing the names. And then after we advance further, then the Lord qualities are revealed to us. Just like uh, the other day I was discussing with a group of devotees. Putna came, Putna offered her milk to Krishna, which was actually poison. Um, Krishna didn't see 
that Putna offered poison, Krishna just saw she came like a mother. So Krishna gave her the position of um, uh, Krishna gave her the position of mother in Vraj. And Uddhav, Uddhav was telling this comes in third canto, interaction between Uddhav and Maitra Muni. And Uddhav is telling, how can I worship any other Lord other than Krishna, who even though Putana came to kill her, gave her a position of mother in Braj. So Krishna's quality of mercy and Krishna's quality of only seeing good in others is emphasized here. This comes in later chapters of Lecture of Devotion also, when the chapter comes, qualities of Krishna. So <clears throat> Today morning I was hearing a beautiful lecture. It was 90 minutes long lecture by Shivra Maharaj. And he was mentioning how by um, hearing a, more about Krishna by Shravan, Shravan um, by hearing more about Krishna will lead to Smaran, will lead to meditation. Um, but if you are not hearing about Krishna, then we will not be able to get to the chance of Smaran or remembering Krishna. So um, once we hear and as we advance, then the qualities of the Lord become manifest and powerful uh, during the chanting the names of the Lord. That's like the third stage. And the fourth stage is too high. Fourth stage is when the Leelas of the Lord capture during the medium of chanting. Is it all like my Prabhu? Yeah, so is this like form manifesting even that happens in Anartha Nivrati stages? That will happen. Baby. That will happen. Now, wow. this, this form manifesting is not Krishna. It may be a deity of the Lord. It may be a picture of the Lord. That's what comes in the beginning stage. Um, after that qualities come, after that pastime comes, um, the real, I mean, they are non different, deity and the Lord. But Golo Vrindavan, right now, Krishna performing pastime, that will manifest after Leela stage. Does it help? Yeah, okay. 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 Any other question? <clears throat> okay. Sridhar Prabhu, you would like to help us? So, an intelligent person does not take part in the source of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. Hope, son of Krishna Kunti, such a such pleasure have beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Hmm. This verse is very very. Uh, you may have heard. Ehi samspasa chaboga dukha yona na evati. Adi Antavanta Kontaya Nateshu Ramati Buddha. Uh, as one contact the senses with the object of the senses, the result is dukkha. Dukkha is produced. Our experience may be contradictory because we may see we may see that by contacting the senses with the object of the senses, sukha is produced. We may see like that. But actually, Dukkha is produced. And how to understand that? This Krishna explains as happiness in mode of passion. In 18th chapter, Bhagavad Gita, where he says happiness in mode of passion brings little pleasure in the beginning, uh, but there is a lot of suffering in the end. So if you see overall, the result of contacting the senses with the object of the senses is actually Dukkha overall. But there is some transitory happiness in the beginning. <clears throat> and that is Krishna says happiness in mode of passion. And he says happiness in mode of goodness is uh, which has uh, uh, which is very difficult to form. Um, which poison in the beginning, nectar in the end. That is goodness. And passion is um, nectar in the beginning, poison in the end. But the prolonged duration is a later on. So goodness, happiness is long-term happiness, but in the beginning, difficult to take up. Or waking up early in the morning, chanting the names of the Lord. In the beginning, maybe difficult, but long-term happiness. But pure sense enjoyment, nectar in the beginning, short, but long-term misery. So <clears throat> in the source, due to contact with the material senses, 
or son of Kunti, such pleasure have a beginning and end and end. Now, please give me a minute and I will be back. Okay, uh, I am sorry. There was, I will tell a short story on this. There was a king, his name was Pururava. And uh, Pururava got married to uh, a heavenly girl. Her name was Urvashi. And Urvashi said, uh, uh, I will marry you, but two conditions. Um, she said many, con three conditions she mentioned. One of the condition was, um, I will come to live with you with a lamb, you know, sheep, with a sheep, and you have to protect my sheep. If you don't, could not protect my sheep, uh, I will go to heavenly planets and I will leave you. And another condition she put, is I will eat food stuff only made in ghee. And the third condition she put is, I don't want to see you without clothes um, um, other than um, in the bed. Otherwise, I don't want to see you without clothes. Uh, because Prabhupada says there, even the uh, heavenly people, they have uh, certain ethics. Um, and Urvashi got married and Pururava was very happy trying to um, trying to enjoy her association um, but Indra started feeling separation from Urvashi and he sent uh, some of his representatives to um, get Urvashi so these representatives they knew the condition of Urvashi they came and they stole the lambs and they started running away. And uh, Urvashi became very angry and he said, what kind of king you are? My lambs are stolen and they were flying because they are heavenly people. But king was very powerful also. So he started running behind them to chase. But because he was without clothes, he just started running to chase and Urvashi saw her and Ur Urvashi saw him and she said, you have broken my condition and she left. And uh, now Pururava, was experiencing extreme misery. Um, it is described that uh, uh, he did severe austerities to again have Urvashi as his wife. Severe austerity, intense lamentation. And finally, Urvashi agreed that I will come to you. This story comes in Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, this story is described uh, to explain the um, how the uh, any kind of material sense gratification brings lot of misery and uh, uh, Pudurava uh, uh, did intense austerity and Urvashi agreed that I will come uh, and spend a night with you once in a year and Pudurava would wait for the whole year and then Urvashi would come and he would become very happy in her association and then 
when the morning comes guru urvashi would just disappear and go back to heavenly planets and guru rava will be in fire of lamentation out of uh, separation from her and throughout the year he will pass he will pass in intense anxiety um, and then urvashi gave a lesson to guru rava ki why are you wasting your life running behind this this situation why can't you come out of it why are you uh, making your happiness depend upon uh, somebody else why don't you worship the supreme lord actually purava became a very nice devotee and that's why this story comes in bhagavata shri bhagavata contains stories of kings kings who were at some there were many many stories like this in bhagavata who at one point of time were very attracted to the sense pleasure and purava was thinking alas i wasted my uh, so many i wasted almost my entire life running behind the materialistic happiness um, that comes with ehi samsparsha chaboga contact of senses with the object of the senses and uh, once in a while i had some temporary pleasure and my whole life is actually going in intense anxiety we see even in i mean there are many many stories time is short but this is the point um, every material happiness has a beginning and has an end adi anta vanta konte adi it has a beginning anta is has an, it has an end adi anta vanta konte ya na teshu ramate bura 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 does not mean old person bura means intelligent experienced person na teshu ramate ramate is enjoy na teshu ramate bura so experienced person does not take part in the source of misery he understands uh, what that he understands the naked truth behind the material nature and this is another symptom of a liberated soul now the connection is three doers because of ignorance we have we misuse of our we misuse our free will when we misuse our free will out of ignorance um um we assume sinful suffering etc um but when we take shelter of the lord we come to knowledge when we come to knowledge we come out of our ignorance we become liberated and now what are the symptoms of a person who is liberated he sees super soul and parmatma in the heart of every living entity in the heart of every living entity and uh, he focuses by he derive his happiness within uh, he is not attracted to sense pleasure like the last slide here he is not attracted to sense pleasure but he always derive his happiness within him by concentrating on the supreme and why he avoid sense pleasure this is the answer here he avoid sense pleasure because it's a cause of misery it's a cause of misery so living entity does not derive happiness there because dukha it produces dukha it has a beginning and has an end so a living entity derives pleasure where there is no beginning and no end that is a supreme word we are happy in this life we are happy in next life if we are just very much temporary just very narrow vision just let me enjoy this then that person is not said very intelligent person because he is not able to see the whole picture together okay a small goal in this life towards happiness abhi ji i have a question all right deep in this uh in the yeah in this purport uh, it's written the mystics derive unlimited transcendental pleasure from the absolute truth and therefore the supreme absolute truth the personality of godhead is known as rama yes who is referred as rama here prabhuji yeah rama means uh, pleasure the pleasure? word rama yeah okay so yeah. uh um, when one concentrates on the supreme then he derives unlimited pleasure and that is called rama is that all right yes prabhuji thank you okay you're very welcome okay so i guess navya mata ji chal prabhu ji 
before giving up this present body if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger he is well situated and is happy in this world mm. so this is something that we have to do um this is something that even if we are not liberated try to do this one is tolerate the urge of material senses the nature of material senses is they are never satisfied and they are always uh, urging urging now things which are allowed in krishna consciousness you can do one example is prasad no problem eat nice prasad no problem because if it is prasad it will purify you uh, no matter what you will not go down in bhakti by eating nice prasad you want gulab jamun cook offer if you can digest eat 20 gulab jamun no problem but the urges which are unfavorable to krishna consciousness tolerate them tolerate if you get a desire i want to enjoy like this and this and this and hankering oh i wish i could enjoy like that i am so unfortunate see others are so happy enjoying but i am miserable if such desire comes because of ignorance because of illusory energy of the lord tolerate and pray to krishna my lord please free me from your illusory energy uh, because you may have once in a while experienced or maybe every day you are experiencing um, when we are in divine consciousness the mind does not go towards materialistic pleasures when you are in divine consciousness but that may not happen all the time because we we, we are in waves um, vishnu sakavari thakur says over a period of time that waves stop and we can continuously stay in devotion in an advanced stage so till that time uh, tolerate tolerate the urge of senses check the force of desire many many desires may arise and they will be like a force i want this and this and this and this and this this is my list this is what i want check the force tolerate the force uh, if you can do that you will be happy in this world and if you recall same concept is discussed in second chapter where krishna says um just like an ocean so many rivulets are merging into the ocean the ocean stays deep and is not agitated likewise so many desires may enter into the mind the person should not try to fulfill all the desires but should try to remain self satisfied that person can be happy in this world be self satisfied and uh, not like 20 desires are coming and start running behind each desire and that will cause the if we are not checking the force of desire then what will happen is the next this is the last section for today we have 16 minutes uh, but this is only one verse that we'll discuss in this section it's called peace formula okay now who has not read shubhraman prabhu searching after peace that is the struggle for existence everyone from the acutex to the highest form of human being from the ant up to the brahma the first creature of this universe is searching for peace that is the main objective lord chaitanya said that the person who is full krishna consciousness is the only peaceful man because he has no demands he is a command thank you prabhu so we all know that every living entity is searching after peace this is very obvious many times people come to temple we ask them what brings you to temple thoda shanti milta hai <laughs> because material world is so much anxiety <laughs> everyone is looking for peace krishna is giving here peace formula uh, and uh, prabhu says starting from aquatics to human beings and to brahma everyone is looking for peace the only persons the lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said that a person who is in full krishna conscious is the only peaceful man because he has no demands he is akamaha 
So akama means kama means desire. Akama means who has no no material desires. That person is only peaceful. Same thing mentioned in the previous verse. Krishna says, before you give up this life, as long as you're living in this body, tolerate the urges of your senses. Please tolerate. Check the force of desire. That is similar. In a, This is another way of saying the same thing. Check the force of desire or tolerate the demands of the senses. Check the force of desires. <coughs> and here Prabhupada is telling, if we do not check the force of desire, we cannot be peaceful. There will always be an anxiety running behind mirage, running behind trying to get something, thinking that this will give me happiness. So check the force of desire. Okay. And uh, very good example in this in this case, who was Akamaha uh, and who was completely peaceful was Prahlad Maharaj. Although he was put in so many ang anxious situations, he was desireless. He didn't even desire to save himself from death. Very advanced platform. It's a theory for me to speak on about him. Uh, but he was completely peaceful amidst extremely difficult circumstances. Because mainly because he was completely taking shelter of the Lord. And by taking the shelter of the Lord, he, although in a extremely unfavorable situation, he was on a bhava platform. Bhava platform means uh, heart was filled with devotion. And when, when once in a while you may experience when the heart is filled with devotion, uh, then the feeling may come, my Lord, you can kill me, you can do whatever you like to me. Uh, I just want to serve you. That is that consciousness, that desire, that thought process comes when we are overwhelmed by ecstasy of the Supreme Lord. So that's why only a fully Krishna conscious person is the only peaceful man because he is in ecstasy. So he just doesn't care about the circumstances in this material world. Okay. Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suhuridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantim Vichyati Okay. Now, anyone who has not read? Yes, Prabhupada. Okay, yes. A person is full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. Okay, this is the last verse for today. Bhoktaram Yagata Pasam. Krishna is telling, I am the enjoyer. Prabhupada says, in spiritual world, there is only one Bhokta, that is Krishna. He is the only Bhokta, he is the only enjoyer. Bhoktaram Yagata Pasam. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. He is the only proprietor. Suhuridam Sarva Bhutanam. He is the true friend of all living entity. Gyatva Mam Shantim Rachati. One who knows this, he attains Shantim. Shanti means peace. Little bit explanation. We may become like initially, I remember somebody told me, we are not the enjoyers. Krishna is the only enjoyer. I became depressed <laughs> because I was thinking, I am not the enjoyer, but I really want to enjoy. <laughs> then how is it Krishna is the only enjoyer? And when, uh, when the thought would come to enjoy and I would think, oh, I am not the enjoyer, Krishna is the enjoyer, I cannot enjoy. More than empowering, it was depressing. Um, then the, the fact is that we are the enjoyers. But our enjoyment is, de is dependent upon Krishna. It is said that Krishna is independent enjoyer and we are dependent enjoyer. We are enjoyers, but we enjoy serving Krishna. That's where our enjoyment comes from. Like when we chant the holy name, when we discuss Bhagavad Gita, um, um, when we eat Krishna Prasadam, you know, nobody can deny Krishna Prasadam, there is a lot of enjoyment there. So we enjoy it, but we enjoy keeping Krishna in the center. 
and as the previous verse we saw when we try to enjoy without keeping krishna in the center dukha yonana evate it will be misery this example shri prabhupad gave if you water the root of the tree the entire tree is nourished um, likewise the root of the entire creation is krishna everything emanates from him. krishna says in seventh chapter next chapter only next chapter no next to next chapter seventh chapter onwards bhagavad uh, bhakti yoga starts first six chapters are only introduction but the next chapter the whole chapter will discuss about mind and mind control very important chapter so if you if you water the root the entire tree is nourished likewise if you uh, please krishna uh, then the entire creation becomes happy in this way so it is true um, that's why krishna says in fifth chapter we discuss in the beginning of the chapter that uh, if you perform devotional service everyone becomes dear to you you become dear to everyone why because you are nourishing krishna in a way you are serving krishna then everybody around you become happy with you and you become dear to everyone that's the secret of devotional service if you just please the lord everything around you and with you will be perfect that's and that's the key um, there is another story that prabhupad used to say he said one time stomach went on strike and he said and one time uh, hands legs mouth tongue uh, they were discussing you know we go out to buy grocery from walmart and we cook and uh, that the mouth and tongue said we chew we put so much energy to chew and grind the food for what stomach tummy enjoys and we just work and he enjoys everything is everything is done to provide to stomach and stomach enjoys we are not going to work we have will go on strike then they went on strike hand will not cut and cook legs will not go to buy grocery mouth will not take any food inside let stomach suffer why should he enjoy that's our consciousness in a conditioned state um, um what is the need to give pleasure to krishna what is the need to serving krishna why should i serve krishna i am happy by doing whatever i like to do but then what happens when the stomach is not nourished the hand legs mouth everybody became weak and depressed they they got no energy then they realize actually stomach does not keep anything for himself he is supplying everything to all of us so let us feed stomach by feeding stomach we can be happy likewise by serving krishna we can be happy very quick story durvasa muni with 60000 disciples okay 6 minutes durvasa muni with 60000 disciples came to duryodhan duryodhan was very pleased Durvasa Muni, Durvasa Muni fed all of them. Uh, Durvasa Muni was very pleased. He asked Durvasa, ask for a benediction. Durvasa was envious towards Pandavas, and he said, Pandavas are uh, my very dear brothers. I want them to receive your blessing. So can you go and honor Prashadam at their home and give your blessings to them? Durvasa Muni said, All right. but do you know that they cannot provide because they are in the forest uh, finally durvasa muni went now dopadi had a pot it's called akshay patra this akshay patra pot uh, it can cook for any number of people as long as dopadi has not eaten but by this time dopadi has already eaten her food uh, durvasa muni with all the sages came to maharaj register can you feed us maharaj register know that we cannot feed maharaj register said well go and take bath in the river uh, and come back we will arrange in the meantime the rishi mara said properly do something dopadi said i am helpless i cannot cook uh, i have already eaten i cannot even provide food for one person now uh, then dropadi as usual this is her habit being a devotee krishna she called out to krishna and whenever she is in trouble she calls out to krishna we saw that when she was getting this robe also she did that krishna came in the form of infinite sari uh, cloth so 
Krishna said, do not worry, uh, bring the pot. And can you feed me? Draupadi said, that is my problem. I cannot feed anyone at this point of time. Krishna said, just bring the pot. She brought the pot. The pot was already washed, but there was a small grain in some corner. And Krishna ate that mm. grain. Krishna ate that grain and Krishna was satisfied. And Krishna told Yudhishthira Maharaj, go and bring uh, Durvasa Muni for Prashadam. But Yudhishthira Maharaj has full faith. He sent Bhima. And uh, then Bhima went there and nobody was there. Then he asked a local Brahmana, where are the sages? Oh, they were taking bath. After taking bath, their stomach became double the size. And they were bulging out. Uh, then Durvasa Muni asked all the people, are you guys hungry? Everybody said, we cannot even take a drop of water. We are so full. It's difficult to sit, sleep. You know, sometimes if you overeat, we cannot even sit or sleep also. <laughs> it's so full. Uh, Durvasa Muni said, they are, he is Dharmara. They are very powerful people. Uh, if they have now prepared for 60,000 people, if we do not feed them, they will curse us. So Durvasa Muni told his disciple, run. They ran away. And that's how Krishna saved them. But the idea is, when Krishna was satisfied, all the sages and Durvasa Muni were satisfied. Everybody is satisfied. So if you try to please Krishna, everything around you will become happy. So again, we don't enjoy enjoying. We enjoy being enjoyed. When you chant the holy names, when you render devotional service, you actually enjoy. But when you try to enjoy independent of Krishna, Dukha Yudhana Evata, it will bring a lot of misery, just like Urvashi and Pururava. Then, this is the second principle, Sarva Loka Maheshwara. Krishna is the proprietor of everything. Krishna says, I am the proprietor of spiritual and material world. So, he is a proprietor. A lot of anxiety in today's world is because of proprietorship. And uh, we should understand that nothing belongs to us. Nothing belongs to us in this material world. Um, based on whatever karma. And now if you really see, lot of our property comes from ancestors. Doesn't belong to us. Whatever we earn, um, we may say that I acquired it. That's actually because of our karma. And we leave everything here and go, go away. Uh, go away once our life duration is over. And our kids or, you know, progeny, uh, takes care of that property. They may use it tightly, they may misuse it, whatever. So, one should understand that nothing belongs to us. Everything belongs to Krishna. Then one will be free from anxiety. I know one devotee, I was visiting in a home of one devotee and uh, New Vrindavan called them. And New Vrindavan has this cow protection uh, schemes. So, they were giving $31 donation every month to New Vrindavan to protect cows. And New Vrindavan called them and they said, we are, um, um, there is, we have added some more cows. Um, it's becoming difficult for us to manage. Can you help us with $51 instead of $31? And I went to their home. Just randomly, I happened to go there. I was supposed to meet that family on, on that day. And Mataji was in so much anxiety. Prabhuji, how can they take $20 from us? How can they ask $20? <laughs> so, <coughs> lot of anxiety uh, is caused when we claim ourselves as proprietors. I remember, like, uh, I was working. I, I was living in Grand Rapids. And uh, uh, one devotee asked me that one brahmachari in India is uh, trying to make a iPhone app um, for his spiritual master. So he needs an iPhone. Can you sponsor? And uh, I was like, uh, okay, how much it is? And uh, he said, it is $800. <laughs> My heart sank. <laughs> Attachment. <laughs> My heart sank. I'm like, <laughs> why everything belongs to Krishna? Then why? So, and then I was afraid if devotees will ask me for any favor. <laughs> uh, I remember that uh, you know this is a this is a strong strong point actually. I myself 
um, I worked in US for three years so I can understand um, but the essence is clear that when we consider ourselves as a proprietor then uh, it causes lot of anxiety okay it's 11 o'clock there is I think one last slide that Krishna is the friend of all living entity Suridam Sarva Bhutana this nature of this material word is this material word is full of anxiety full of anxiety so if in every situation if you can take shelter of Krishna uh, Krishna heard Krishna hears you every time you pray to Krishna Krishna will hear you and uh, uh, Krishna will solve all your problems Krishna will solve all your anxieties so if you have any anxiety uh, some relationship problems uh, whether it is with the manager or it is in the office or it is with anything you should know that uh, Krishna is sitting in the heart of every living entity and Krishna is sitting in your heart also and Krishna is closest to you just like we have a natural tendency to approach a family member or uh, we share with family member and we ask for guidance or our friends or someone in those experiences natural tendency to receive help if you turn toward Krishna who is sitting right in the region of your heart um, turn towards Krishna and say my lord please help me this is what I am going through and it's mysterious how Krishna will make everything perfect he will make everything perfect and uh, I myself has have gone through very very difficult tests in my own life um, like there was a point of time please keep it confidential where one family uh, was uh, uh, very unhappy with me uh, and uh, um, they were kind of um, criticizing me at different different places and I was hearing the news that this is happening they are telling this about you they are telling this about you they are telling this about you now it was a test phase for me and I wanted to please Krishna so I started praying for that family and um, I started praying my lord uh, uh, whatever is your desire please let me not act in a material consciousness please let every word I speak and let everything I do um, in some way or the other um, and then I would pray in my heart that uh, um, please remove anxiety from the heart of that family please help in this situation and that's what we are supposed to do is take shelter of Krishna I knew that I should not speak anything bad about anyone because then I fail the test then I will be incriminated by the by the material nature so I should not speak bad if I speak bad then there is no difference then I'm sharing the same disease Prabhupada said that they are criticizing you also criticize what is that what is that what is the use and one of the instruction that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said if you want to go back to home back to Godhead he said three things always chant the name of Krishna um, whoever you meet speak about Krishna and third thing he said don't criticize devotees if you do these three things you will go back home back to Godhead so I didn't want to do that and I sincerely prayed day after day and still things were worsening after some time of lot of every time I would pray I would somehow or other receive a message that uh, uh, from the same family that uh, many times that happened that probably we did like this we did like this we did like this we are sorry please forgive us so then I was thinking that that family could never had said like this or thought like this it is only because Krishna sitting in their heart inspired them uh, Krishna inspired them and Krishna made everything all right so that is a secret of peace the nature of this material world is there will be anxiety no matter what but if you can take shelter of Krishna and think he is the friend he is your real friend then you will become perfectly alright okay that's all I have for today I am very grateful to all of you for um, joining and discussing Krishna Katha um, 
can I end here? And we begin with the sixth chapter. Discusses a lot about mind and how to control the mind uh, in the next week. Okay. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna